I'm Tom Penley, and today we're going to test some tension back ties. Technical Rescue Field Operations Guide. Fifth edition. I'm and I'm a guy who answer. appreciates uh, a good diagram. Do you make all these yourself? I make I make those diagrams. I'm, I'm, I'm revising that one right now. We care a lot about having solid anchors, and we also want to be light, and we want to be efficient. So we're, te we're testing some of the components that, in theory, we think are strong enough but we want to we want to be sure sterling power cord is 5.9 millimeters very low stretch nylon over technora and the advantage is it weighs like three pounds for a 50 meter piece of it and it's super versatile for rigging and it gives you really rigid anchors anchor points for rigging because a lot of our other anchoring material it actually is kind of stretchy so it's nice to have something really solid like this is obviously a uh, a rescue context. But this technique is actually really helpful if you're trying to b reinforce an anchor that you're building for any of the other sports we cover. So this is actually very, uh, very helpful for me when I'm gonna go out and play as well. When I have some substantial anchors, but none of them being in the right perfect place, I can collect them, three of them with power cord, with two strands of power cord into one collection point, which creates a bomb proof anchor or a very substantial anchor right here where I can put the main and the belay um, on one anchor point. Very low stretch. This isn't going to move at all. And I just have one s double strand going forward to a uh, opposition anchor out near the edge. Um, and I have a nice safe work zone right here. I might have some kind of high directional there or we're doing a low directional edge transition, but this allows me to have my main and belay in a really convenient spot, really easy to work with right here. What we're gonna do is test it on our bollards first that we have so we can show that this particular rope is breaking at that uh, number because this is what, five years old? This one's, this one's about five years old. It looks like it's in great shape. I think it's gonna be full strength. And then we can use that as a baseline, tie a figure eight end to end. So as you see us wrap it more and more, you can see the progression of strength that we get. You wanna break stuff now? Yeah, let's break it. Okay, so we clothed it off so we can test it on our bollard. It's wrapped four times. <laughs> wow, pretty good for a five-year-old rope. That's pretty close to full strength. It's supposed to be 19.8. Yeah. Feel that. It's not moving. Yeah, that's that's bound. But it's usually you can the pull sheath, the sheath out. The sheath is not bound to the core. It's well, just I made it, it is, bound to the core. We bounded it. <laughs> now, if you were worried about heat and abrasion, you would put the Technor on the outside of the rope and the nylon on the inside, which is the VT press. I think it's right here is the video. Maybe. Did I call it? Ah! <laughs> so that we lost quite a lot, 50%, more than 50%. Yeah. High-tech, super static cords are known for that, but it's so fun to see in real life. So I stretched out 100 feet of power cord, which is 5.9, and mm. put, it, put it to an anchor, and put a little pulley system on it, put pre-tension 20 pounds, and at 600 pounds, this uh, with 100 feet, it stretches 15 inches. <laughs> and we took half inch, at 600 pounds, it's 54 inches. Wow. Yeah, it's like so much, so different. So this is so low stretch. On the bollards was- Impressive. Impressive. Good. Really impressive. Or not. So the pinching action is a big deal here. So for this tie back, I'm going to start with a figure eight and a bite. We're going to do it just a double strand tie back. I'm going to come back up here. I'll do a round turn. It helps as a progress capture to help me kind of tension this up. Tie a half hitch on a bite. And then. And you only wrap that around the loads. I'm load. only wrapping it around the load side. You could do both, but Sterling did some testing on that and they said this is a stronger. I'm gonna do two half hitches. Two half hitches on a bite makes a clove hitch, basically. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna clip that bite in just as sort of as a 
little bit extra. This is a fully closed system. That makes sense. 14.7 is better than I thought it was going to be, so I was expecting it to be a lower number. Your so. expectations are really yeah. low after. <laughs> we'll do three of those, and then we'll see how a, a three-legged strand does. What was going on here? It got tight. It, I, was that it one or two? Half, no, that was two half hitches. It was two half hitches, and it slipped down, and that bite came on tight on the rope. So putting wow. that bite in there is probably a good thing. Okay, so we're tying this. Figure in a bite, comes around back to the main carabiner with a round turn. I'm pulling it tight. I'm giving it a pinch to hold it. And I'm gonna take a half hitch. And then going in the same direction, another half hitch. And making sure that I dress it tight. Pull every strand. Now I'm going to take that bite, yep. clip it in. See if that gets tight. Maybe I did the last one wrong. Human error wise, it's good to have the bite in there. It got tight, but I don't think it was. It didn't do the same thing, didn't but do it the also same broke thing. at 15. Here's the triple back tie. Oh, well, that was louder. I'm happy with the 24 number. 24 is much better than. <laughs> What's interesting here is it's breaking at the figure eight. It's breaking at the knot. I was talking to Kirk Mockner on the phone about we're force limiting and we're talking about the high line and the full strength tie. Why would you, why would you bother to do a full strength tie? -on? You're just wasting rope. You're wasting time because you're never going to get to that level because you have a force limiting device in there. What's the point? Yep. And so we get so drilled in on what we've been taught, we can't get out of the lane of that. So broken this knot. This is what's inside. Instantly gone, right? I love this. <laughs> it's every time breaking at the figure eight, strength without a knot is closer toward 20. So maybe there's a better connection than a figure eight on a bite. Um, Let me know if you find with, one. With this material, <laughs> um, well, it could be a figure nine. Let's do, let's do a figure nine for fun. Let's do a figure nine for fun. It was lowest. And where did it break? It broke It broke at the figure nine, so that didn't help. All right, well, we know, we know now that there's no advantage to tying in. a figure nine with Technora. So the next one is a triple tie back with a bowline on a bite as a terminating knot here. They're getting worse, you guys. Oh, no. I think bowlines in general, no matter which bowline you tie, is gonna be weak, the weakest Swear. From, based on all the literature. Now we're gonna do a double tie back on a half inch rope, figure eight on this side, and the same thing going on on this side. .89. 40 baby oh my gosh it broke in the knot it's a new shape it deformed quite a bit the, the spine's got a little i hear bit. that makes it stronger when it's curved <laughs> stretchy material is, is the more of this we have that's going to yeah. stretch a lot less than a single yeah and is, is, that's all and obviously it's strong enough the the technora is is really plenty strong I mean, I guess we like bigger is better. Big, oh yeah, 39 is better than 23. Um, but I also like the fact that it weighs three pounds for 150, 165 feet. <laughs> what we're looking for is a fit, fast, efficient, safe. Um, and so how do we get, how do we get there consistently? Here's some brand new Sterling power cord in an eight to eight just to see if we're getting similar results. Almost nine. The three strand. We'll one. jump straight to that. Yeah. I don't want to use up too much of this. Yeah, it's because it's this nice. Is, it's my brand new one. <laughs> Twenty six is two higher than our average. Yeah, we got to do at least at least, at least two more. 
Yeah. <laughs> Broke it 24. 24. Wow, that's what we got on the other material. So would you say that our two two wrap back tie was at 15 kilonewtons super strong enough? Would you use it? Yeah, I think so. What it comes down to when you're rigging anchors, especially in the backcountry, is it's hard to guess where how much material you're going to need. And so sometimes you only have enough of this to make one leg. Sometimes you have enough to make two. Sometimes you have enough to make three to make a functional anchor. Because sometimes it's, like you said, like 100 feet back. It can, it can be, or, you know, any any amount of distance. To, you you want to get a good work zone. You want you want your, your master point anchor to be um, in a point of, a function where it's safe to work and efficient to work and so and sometimes your anchors are going to be pretty far back from the edge and spread out so you make a multi-point master point anchor um you know i would go with three if i could get three uh two okay. and then ultimately like i did if we, you have the material we, just hanging yeah there. we did yeah. It. We, we 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 were doing some training where we ended up with a double leg and a single leg. And that's what we had enough cord for to get, because we had to get over our ridge line. Well, you can see how strengths add up as you do the wraps, which sounds obvious, unless I guess you don't know that. Um, let me know if you are not in the rope rescue world and found this interesting. So I know whether or not to try to cross pollinate as much as possible.